Welcome to another episode of Six Life Questions, hosted by Corey Gregory. Today, I've got Trayvon Alford, Trayvon Dier Alford, on the show. And I'm, you know, Trey's got his shoes off. I'm going shoes off. We're, we got hoodie up, shoes off. We're rocking today. All right. So I wanted to run all of the max effort Corey G guys through this process first. Trey had heard, you know, some things and couldn't wait to get on the show. So, all right. Number one, Trey, what is one ritual that you are really dedicated to? One ritual I'm really dedicated to? Um, it could be pleasure, work, doesn't matter. Just something you're super dedicated to. That like that I do that I just don't like to miss every yeah. single day. Hmm. Well, the first one that comes to mind, I would say, would definitely be like the gym, four a.m. Yep. Every single day. Yeah, because you come on the weekends too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do come on the weekends too. Still, yeah. Um. So I would say like definitely like I would say the gym is probably like the one thing that, no matter what, throughout my day or life, is always a consistent like okay. I know I'm gonna be at the gym at four a.m. Yep. I would say like that's the thing that definitely. You know, it goes through my mind every single day. Like, that's where I know I'm going to be doing at every single day at least. So even when you're out doing things, the training or being in that environment is just ultimately important to you being part of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, if, I, if I'm, if i like, you know, even if I'm, like, going out or something like that, like, I'm going out with some friends to drink or something like that, I still know, like, I still know that I have that in the morning. I'm always conscious of it. Yeah. 100%. Because what a lot of people may or might may not know is you did it in high school, too. Yeah, yeah, it was five, maybe five then, or yeah. Whatever. So like in high school, yeah. So like before I even started coming to four a.m., I was doing five a.m. in high school for like two years before that. So I've always had like that like morning kind of ritual like within my life where I think I've always been like a morning person, like yeah. similar to you. Like I definitely think that I strive like within those like morning hours, like that kind of like window how we yeah. all like kind of feel, you know. Shout out Trey because there's no way I would have done that in high school. See, and I know that about myself. <laughs> so when AG's late for school, I go. He's like, well, weren't you late for school? I'm like, of course I was, but I'm your dad and I'm supposed to teach you better. <laughs> but the reality is, is that you were extremely disciplined even at like your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've continued that on, which is why you're a successful dude. Like that's not an accident. Yeah. So, all right, good. Number two, what is one thing or you can, a couple guys give a couple things that you're super proud of hmm. that when you tell your grandma, you tell a friend, it's like something you accomplished or did that you're like, you can't hide that you're proud of it. Um, so I would say the answer that comes to mind is like, I'm not, and this isn't to say that I'm satisfied with this answer, yeah. but I think the answer that comes to mind is right now. I would say like the life that I've already built. Yeah, yeah. I would say, um, not just like, I'm still these are all going to change as you get yeah, older yeah, yeah. too. And, like, so I'm, understand. and I'm still not like satisfied with where I'm at, like completely in life, but of course. like, um, to look back, like if I was going to like take a couple of steps back though, like if you would have asked me where I wanted to be at when I would have been in high school or in middle school, I think that I, I mean, I, no, I think I know for a fact, I would have said the answer that like exactly where I'm at right now, like Hell yeah. the business situations that I'm in, even the place I'm living, the, the way you operate, how I'm, yeah, just how I'm operating my life. Like where I'm at right now is where I wanted to be at. Yeah. Like just a few years ago. So to already be where I wanted to be in life at the age that I am now, like I'm very, very grateful and very, oh, very yeah. happy for. But that, that just makes me excited, though, than to see like where else it could go as well. Of course. Well, and, and so that's the point of that question is that if you explain to somebody how you operate, mm -hmm. you well, first off, you know what their look on their face is going to be. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've seen it because you've done it right. And two, that you're proud that you created a life like that for yourself at this point. Obviously one, you want to improve upon that. We all mm -hmm. do. So that's, that's a great answer though. Anything else you want to add to that? No, that was good. All right. Number three, one thing you wish you could change. One thing I wish I could change in yeah. my life, like yeah. I, in my whole life. Um, I wish my family situation was like different. Um, mm -hmm. like I wish I was definitely like closer with my family. Um, I wish, I wish like, I wish some like family situations would have been a little bit different when I was growing up too, maybe sure. like, so I could see just the opposite side of it. But I mean, I'm not, I guess like, I just wish that would have been different. Not necessarily saying I would have changed that because if I was to change that, then I wouldn't be the person that I was like, you know, like you now are. in life. Yeah. So like, honestly, I guess like the real answer would be, there's nothing, honestly, I would change in life because there's nothing in that. If I was to go back and change anything, then I wouldn't be 
maybe where I'm sitting at right now in life. So that question is really the answer is the same for me yeah. because you think, well, I wish my old man would have played the lottery. Yeah, I wish he yeah, would have spent yeah. time with me, but then am I as good of a dad mm-hmm. or this driven yeah. if those things were the way they were supposed to be? And I would argue there's, it's impossible. Yeah, it wouldn't be. So, but I still think that's a great answer because those are things that if you get the chance to fix, you mm-hmm. will. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, I love it. Uh, number four, what initially built your confidence to try these type of things? Like how did you build, and this is obviously an ever going thing, but what was the first time where you went? Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Like I'm, you know, like where you were like confident about going into something, doing something. What was the, what helped then that be the byproduct? Hmm. Um, I would say one thing that really like started off my confidence was when I got into modeling there and like when I got into modeling, that would have been like early middle school or something like around pretty there. motherfucker. Yeah. I mean, yeah, honestly, like just knowing, like just knowing that I was a good looking person, yep. like that did a lot. For Somebody me. like third party said, Trey. Yeah. Like yeah. someone that, yeah, that someone was like, I mean, like, sounds like weird but that someone's willing to pay you for your look yeah like that like your look is that worthy like that alone is is valuable Mm -hmm. i think that alone like did a bunch for my confidence like just knowing that that's something that was valuable alone to me like aside from everything else that i could offer to the table sure do you think um track had a uh any part in your yeah, confidence yeah, still? Tra- yeah, track definitely had like a lot of my confidence too because a lot of people got to remember that track, like outside of relay races, like track is a completely individual sport. Like, For sure. Similar to how wrestling is. Like when you go out there, it's just you out there. Like there's no, there's no one else like track is a, it's a time too. So like, you know, if you did better, you did worse. Like, <laughs> yeah. And you know exactly by how much you did that too. So it's really, really easy to like be critical on yourself and learn and like and all that kind of stuff so like track definitely it helped out a lot because i always ran individual races growing up and stuff like that so yeah i think the individual sports do a lot for people they do yeah yeah yeah. and that's like and that's like something too like i i mean i always like i always did i did track my whole life like i did track since i was like in like early elementary school so like some so like an individual and it's something that was competitive individually was something that was always a part of my life yeah so Probably why you like lifting too. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. All right. Uh, number five. What's uh, success mean to you? Um, simply put, like, I would say, like, just happiness. Um, yeah. Like, I think, like, I think, like, success, like, is just, like, happiness. Like, are you, are you content with, uh, like, what you have in life and everything? Like, I don't think it's, like, a money, like, I don't think it's, like, a money thing at all. Like, yeah. I would say, like... I mean, I would like, I could look at my life like right now and I would say like, I'm successful just because yes. of like, just from like a, like a happiness standpoint and like what I've already like done and accomplished when I go home. Am I like, you know what I mean? Like, am I happy? Like, am I, do I get to do the things that I, that I want to do on a daily basis and all that kind of stuff. So like, even right now, like I would say that my life is like very successful. So I think it's like definitely like a, it's definitely like a happy, like a happiness thing. Well, and I, <clears throat> that's why I always think that a big part of my success was that I felt successful when I was 20 mm-hmm. because I was doing, coming from where I came from and then doing something that I didn't even know if it would work or not. Yeah. And then once I proved it to work, I was like, everything plus this is a, everything outside of this is a plus. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Like this is, was and it, like you guys, it happened relatively young cause I was after it. And then I was like, everything notched from that point just felt like icing on the cake dude yeah yeah. because no, i thought yeah. that might have been my end point yeah exactly yeah i mean yeah like i said like i like where i'm at now in life like i thought that this is like where i'm at now is the end point where i thought i would get at after working like 10 years in a corporate yeah. company to save up enough money then then to go try to do what i wanted to do fucking love it Love it, love it. And I think the more that people hear, and a lot of the guys' questions so far, or answers are similar, like on the success part. Mm-hmm. And that's where, whenever we move to this situation, like operating in something you love to do, working on it with people you enjoy working with, yeah. having freedom, like in happiness, is all based around like if you don't think that's successful, the money and the bag and all that, that stuff helps and it'll come. 
but it's like it's yeah, not all only that, that yeah but all that but like we all know too that like the money and all that that also that comes though that that's just something that comes with with it when you are like happy though yes as long as you're doing like what you truly do love to do and you're passionate about it and you stay consistent yeah. then like it will come hell yeah all right number six trey what's one piece of advice you'd leave everyone Hmm. One piece of advice. I got this um, idea for this question. Like there's, there's been other podcasts that have say like, all right, if you can only leave one thing you would write on a piece of paper, that's the only thing that they're going to be able to read from at 23, 23 year old Trayvon Dier could, could leave. That's really where that comes from. Um, I would say like, I would say like put it all out there. Meaning not necessarily like saying in like what you're going to embody like in your work or anything, but put it all out there in the sense of like emotions and mentally and what you're going to and how you're going to portray yourself and how you're going to share and how you're going to share your feelings to people and like thought provoke people and stuff like that. Like that's something that I'm still working on too is like just as like when I say putting myself out there, like I mean like reaching out to someone and catching up to them or reaching out to someone that you haven't talked to in a very long time and maybe having that conversation that you should have had a long time ago, or maybe there's, maybe there's a friend or something that you need to have a conversation with that you've been putting off for a long time. Like, I think that putting yourself out there and forcing yourself to have those conversations and being the person, I think like it's important to be the person that reaches out yeah. because like, you know, like, it's just, it, it's really helpful. Like some, like, you know, like a, a, just a simple message to somebody like could change their whole day or their whole life or something like that. And as we've seen, like with a lot of people, like you just, you never know like when someone's going to go either. So like making sure that is what you think is needed to be said is said, like when you have the time to, like it's, it's important that that's done. Well, and when you say initially putting yourself out there, people go right to thinking social media. It's not just, the, it's about getting through with the people that need to hear what you have to say or get through conversations. Cause those things rent space, yeah. whether you realize it or not. Right. And mm -hmm. then everyone feels better. A hundred percent. Yeah. Even if it's not like a confrontational thing, but mm -hmm. it's just like, why have I just not talked to this person? They used to, we used to have such good times together or just like a family member that you just need to check in on. Like it literally could change their day. Yeah. So and it could change like your day too. Like, cause like, I've had, cause like just recently, like I had like things that I was thinking about that were like giving me like anxiety, like throughout the day yep. because I was consistently thinking about it. And then I texted the person and then I mean, and then you have anxiety waiting for a text back or whatever. But then once you get the text back and you have a conversation with them and you realize that it's, that it, it's, there's, you mean it's perfectly fine and everything like that. Then yep. you're like then yeah, it just takes off. Then like literally changes your whole day though. And it also changes like their whole day too. So like it makes yeah. it just so much better. Take those things more head on. Yeah. Like definitely take those things more head on because like I said, you, you never know when you're not going to be able to have that conversation. Yeah. Trey, I enjoyed this conversation. Yeah. I loved it too. Six life questions. Trayvon Alford, Trayvon Dier Alford at Trey speed, but actually it's at Trey Dier Now where can everybody find you? I know it's on Twitter. Where, yeah, where, where's the new handle? Uh, Trayvon Dier on over across everything. Trayvon Dier. Yep. And, uh, his, .eth. his tweets are amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Check me on. Check All me. right. Appreciate you, Trey. Yep, See you guys. It. We're out.